In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Scrapey items and the item loader to make your Scrapey projects better. So basically, in my last Scrapey video, I got a basic spider up and running, scraping some products from a website right here. This is where we left it off. Um, what we have is we are returning, as you can see, the items here. We're yielding the back, the name, the price, and the link. And we're basically doing some minor cleaning of the data here and we also had to put in a try and accept because some of the products had no price because they were sold out and the, the code was failing so i'm going to show you using the items and the item loader how that is how you can make this much tidier and much better so the first thing that we want to do is we want to come over to the items file this is a pi file that is created for you by scrapey it's in your project folder and we can see that it's already started and created our class for us here let's make this one bigger so it's easier to see and that has some information in it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to uncomment this line because we do want to use this i'm going to say name is equal to scrapey.field and we can see here that i have a name field in my code as well so i'm going to do the same for price and link price is equal to again it's a field and then also link to uh, there we go so what this is doing is it's creating a sort of template for a basic item that we are we've called whiskey scraper item here this is a default you can change this if you want to and i'm going to remove the pass because we don't need that what we can do now then is we can actually import this class into our main spider and we can then use it to put the data into and then yield back the actual item class instead itself. So if we come back to our code, and I'm going to remove the accept here because we're not going to be using that anymore. We have a better way of dealing with it. I'm going to move the try and let's move this back over so it's in the right sort of place. So what we want to do first is we want to actually import our item in. And to do that, we're going to do uh, from, and our project is called whiskey scraper. I can never remember dot items and we're going to import in our class which is here so i'm going to copy that and paste that in there so basically saying from our items pi file we're going to import this you can do this a slightly different way as well but this is the easiest way so now what we want to do is we want to create uh, an instance of this item class so in our code i'm going to put it above our loop here i'm going to say uh, item is equal to and again, we're going to copy this and there we are, put the parentheses at the end. So we're basically creating an instance of our object, our class here that we can then use. So to do that, you want to remove your yield. We're going to keep this information, but we're just going to change it slightly. So we're going to say uh, item and then put the name in the square brackets is now equal to this bit of information. And this is where we actually extracted the name of the product. We can see we have the dot text here and the dot get, so we can do that. I'm gonna do the same for the price equal to, and I'm gonna leave in the replace for the pound sign at the moment. But when we move on to the item loaders in just a second, I'll show you how we can do that in a better way. And again, item link is equal to. So the reason why this is item here is because this needs to be the same name as this piece here. So you can call this whatever you like, um, but obviously you can't call it the same name as the scraper because you'll get an error. It will confuse everything. So I call mine item, or if you were going to, if you had multiple items that you were scraping from multiple parts of a web page, you would call them appropriately. Uh, you would name them appropriately. So now that we've got that information put there, when it comes to our yield, we just simply need to yield the item. So I'm going to save that and I'm going to come back to my code over here. I've got my terminal open and we're going to run that. I'm going to remove the output. Now this is going to error because there are some products on this website that don't have a price because they're sold out. So I expect to see the code fail, but we'll be able to scroll up through the text and we'll see what the items look like now that we're putting it into our item class and then yielding that for itself. So we can see that it failed. But if I come back up here, we can see that, for example, here we have the link name and the price uh, and it's got that information in it. And we can see it's still got the, uh, it's removed, still removing the pound sign, which is good, which is what we wanted it to do. 
So that's all good and well, um, but we're still having the same problem where we're not getting data and it's failing, and we're still having to put in, uh, for example, our dot replace here. Now, if you had lots of data that you wanted to clean up, this could get really messy really quickly. So this is where the item loader comes in. Now, we can now uh, set up our item loader class and we can tell it to do everything that we want to do, including removing HTML tags and giving it our own functions like replacing a pound sign in a string. So we want to go back to our items file and under import scrapey we want to do from scrapey dot loader and we want to import the item loader. Typing is proving difficult for me today. One second. Item loader. Okay. So we just need to import a few more things and I'll show you how they work with it in just a second. So from item uh, loaders dot processors we want to import uh, take first map and map compose we'll just do those two for now and also from w3 lib dot html html import uh, remove tags there we go so this is the one that is going to, this is the function that will remove the HTML tags. If I hover over it there, it says remove HTML tags only. That's good. Uh, if I do the same for take first, it says returns the first non-null or non-empty value received. So that's what we'll definitely want to use that one. And map compose um, is basically the processor that basically lets us execute functions on the code. Um, so what we want to do is we can use all of this and put it within our scrapey field uh, and get it to do things with the data um, as it brings them in. So as we're doing it at the moment, what we're doing is we're actually, as we grab the data, we are asking for specifically the text and then we are getting it and then we're replacing. So this is all very well, but again, if you had a large project, uh, you'd have to put these all in manually and it would be a bit of a mess and very untidy, a bit of a disaster, to be honest. That's why we use this way. So we can, in our classes, get that to do it for us. So every time it gets an item that matches this class, it's going to do this to all the fields. So what we want to do is we need to use two load, two um, processors. We're going to use the input processor and the output processor. Um, they do just a couple of different things. So we're going to say input processor is equal to, and we're going to give it map compose because this is the one that uh, lets us execute functions on this line. And I'm going to say remove tags. Uh, and then the output processor. Is equal to that was really bad. Sorry, it was tedious to watch take first. I'm going to make this one step smaller. So the whole thing fits on the screen. So you can see it all. So what this line is basically doing is it's saying that when we match the name field in our spider, which is here, we're going to say, put it through the map compose, remove the HTML tags, and then take first, which again returns the first non-null value. I'm going to do exactly the same thing for the price. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to put it in here, but we're also going to add in our own function and we're going to put in to remove the pound sign. So we don't have to do it manually uh, into our code just like that. So I'm going to say like you would do with any normal Python function DEF and I'm going to say remove currency and we have to say we're giving it a value and this is a simple function so I'm just going to return uh, the value dot uh, replace and the pound sign just like we had in our main bit of code with nothing. Let's remove that space and then I'm going to do dot strip as well. So what we can do is we can just call this function on any item class, any item uh, bit that we have it could be a currency and we can remove the pound sign. You could change this and you could have anything here. You could have it removing dashes from your code. You could have it removing new lines. You could have it just stripping white space. And uh, we're going to leave it like that for now. So inside our price, I'm also going to put in my function there here. So now every time it goes through this, it's going to remove the tags and then do our code here, execute our function. I'm going to leave the link as it is um, because we're going to be going directly and getting the href attribute, which we don't need to change. So I'm just going to leave it like that for now. There's a few more things that we need to do to actually make the item loader in our code work. So I'm going to come back and we need to change a couple of things up. But first, we're going to import it. So I'm going to go back here to the top and I'm going to say 
from scrapy.loader import item loader. And now we want to change a few bits of our code. So we need to, as we pull the data in, we need to put it into the loader. So the information comes from the HTML that we grab and we give it to the item loader, which then takes that information, does everything that we defined it to do. So removes some of the, removes the HTML tags. It gets the first one, the non null value, and then it sends it into the item clean. So we want to, I'm going to just remove this and I'm going to put it underneath in our main loop because this is where all of our information is coming from. Now for every item loader, you need to have a selector and our selector is product. So if you think of in our loop, if we weren't doing it this way, we were doing uh, like in some of my other videos where I use requests and beautiful soup, we do four products in blah, blah, blah. And then we do product dot find. So basically that is the selector. The products is the selector. So anything I called it here would need to go in. So I'm going to say L is equal to item loader. And then we need to give it our items class. So we called it item before. I'm going to call it that again. It's this here. So this is our item class that we're using. And then we need to say the selector is equal to products. So basically this is it here. Now we need to change our code here a little bit too. I'm going to leave this here in the, for the moment and then I'll remove it later. But we want to say l.add CSS. So we're saying here's a CSS selector that we want to use. Go and get this bit of information. And I'm going to say the bit of the first bit we're going to grab is the name. And this is here. So we want to say where is that info? And it's in this part here. So we want to take that. We don't want to grab the dot text, sorry, the, the text part and the get because we're doing that here with our map compose instead. So that's that one done. And then L dot add CSS, always CSS because we're using CSS selectors. If you were using XPath, you would do add XPath. Uh, price, and we grab the price uh, span dot price, put that there, and then L dot add CSS, and the last one was link. Now, because we're doing this one slightly differently, I'm actually going to grab this and we're going to, instead of having the dot attribute there, I'm just going to do it inside with ATTR href. So we're not actually touching this one. We're just saying, going to go ahead and grab that as it is. Now underneath here, let's just remove this. We don't need these now. And instead of yielding the item, we're going to yield L for our item loader uh, dot load item. So that's going to do it for that one. So what we're going to do is we're saying our item loader, here's our item. This is our selector. Go and grab this data. It gets it all. It sends it through the loader, through all of the data cleaning that we've done here, and then spits it out the other side. So now I've saved that. If we go back to our terminal and we're going to run this again, and this time I am going to output it and I'm going to say uh, whiskey.csv. I'm going to let it run and hopefully all the information comes out the other side, including um, products that don't have part of that information. And so some that don't have the price will um, still come through the system, still get put into the item loader, but we just won't have the price information there because it doesn't exist. So you can see it's all flashing by at the moment. It's grabbing all the pages. I think there are eight or so pages, uh, but we're getting all the information out here right now. So that's just finished and we can say, we can see that it says item scrape count 762. And if I go back to um, my VS code and come to the here, we can see we've got all the information. There's a nice long CSV file. Um, I'd actually already run this, which is why it's doubled up. Um, but there we can see all the information. If I find a line somewhere that doesn't have a price, we'll see that it's just there's just no information there. I'm sure it's worse. There we go. So you can see this one didn't have a price and it just has no information uh, because you couldn't find anything. So that's essentially it guys. That's how you would use the item class and the item loader in Scrapey. It's definitely worth doing even for small products or even, even for small projects, because if you want to come back to them and expand them, or it's all there, it's all a nice base. Don't forget you can create your own functions that you can give to the map compose that will let you 
execute that on those codes. So if you wanted to do anything different, you could do that. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video and it's been useful for you in some way. This will be the second or the third one in my Scrapey series. There's going to be more coming. We're going to be doing more Scrapey projects. Uh, I think it's a really cool way to do things, especially with Splash uh, and the items and the item loader that I've showed you. We can do a lot of cool things and extract data. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Uh, like the video if you like it. Don't forget to leave me a comment, so tell me what you think. And subscribe if this is of interest to you. Thank you very much, and I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.